Oh, good morning. We have a lovely guest here once again. We've got an update from uh, Karina Stringer from Wings of Success. And there's some actual news here as well. Welcome to the Phil Crew Show. Once again, you're not also just an award-winning business and life alignment coach. You're also an emotional change therapist and now an author as well, Karina. Oh, my goodness. Wow. That was a bit of a mouthful, wasn't it? Blah, 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 blah. Just got that all out. <laughs> oh, it's got that out of my system. Welcome back to the Phil Carew Show. I've noticed you've been a very busy lady with some awards that have been given out by the ESSA, Most Improved Award. Tell us a little bit about that. Yes, so um, two days ago, I was at an event, um, an awards event. I have been in the SR Academy with Jess and James for a year now. Um, and I wanted to go into an academy years ago for my speaking, really push myself in my speaking career. But at the time, didn't have, it, I wasn't in a financial situation to, to do it um, because, I mean, it is a, a huge investment, but it's a huge investment in yourself. And I didn't realise how much it really was an investment in myself because they, now I'm in this academy, in the last 12 months, I've done so many things and really, really pushed myself. But with having that guidance, having that community, the accountability um, has made such a difference because it's all very well that we say that we can push ourselves and we can do all these things. But then there's things that's holding us back that we can't see. And there's a community and there's the accountability that people will call you out on things. That's when the magic happens. That's when you start making progress. Yeah. Um, and in the last year, I really have started making progress because you go to the meeting every month. And somebody's written a book or somebody's got a new deal or yes. you know, somebody's changed the whole structure of their business. And now they're flying and making six, seven, eight figures. And then you're sitting there going, oh, I haven't done anything. I've moved some paperwork on my desk. <laughs> Bless you. <laughs> um, you, you know, you you really held accountable for what you do. So, um, yeah, I finished the book, um, and then I was awarded uh, most improved yes. um, member of twenty twenty two. Oh no, that's that's a big achievement, Karina. You know, it's you know going back. Several years ago, you know, who would have thought, you know, you, you come this far now, you know, and being awarded that. So it's it's all well deserved, you know, recognition. You know, that's it's that's the type of thing, you know, we'd like to hear, you know, on the show. You know, it, it's not always these massive wins, you know, it's wins, you know, as as a whole, you know, it doesn't matter whether they're big or small. It's a win. You know, yeah. that's that's the main thing. You know, a, a lot of people tend to feel that. You know, it's only a little thing. Well, I don't think it's just little, you know, it could be big to others, but then a win is a win. So, yeah, it's well deserved, Karina. Congratulations. And the thing that I loved about it, it was voted by the community who have seen me grow. Um, it wasn't, you know, I was getting my friends and my family and everyone involved and, you know, mm. it was just a numbers thing. It was yeah. just the community that voted and they're not going to vote for people who haven't worked their off to get yeah. results um and it just makes you feel like wow yeah I have actually achieved quite a lot um I've been in the community for a year but I think really in the last six months um where I've continuously spoken on bigger stages and done other things and it's just snowballed and it's just going to continue snowballing into next year. I can feel it. Yeah, no, that's good. You know, that's an amazing feeling. You know, it's having something like that over time. You know, it's it's what happens. You know, when you put in the work, it comes along. You know, as far as where you have, you know, you reap the benefits, don't you? You know, and this is what happened. You know, it's a that's a great great achievement to have. The other question is, like, I like to ask you as well is what was it like to be working alongside with Andy Harrington? You know, again, as in the past, you did some work with it uh, alongside Andy Harrington, but what was it like doing doing work with him uh, this year? Because I know recently you've been doing some more work and uh, 
it's been amazing even just watching you grow you know over the past several years up to where you are now you know it's been amazing so what was it like with Andy Harrington because it'd be quite interesting to have an insight yeah really good um I did the speaker university back in 2027 uh, 27? <laughs> 2017. I know, I know what you mean. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Future pace in there. Um, yeah, 2017, I did the, the university yeah. and then I wasn't able to go into the academy. Yeah. Um, but I did um, Power to Achieve. Um, yeah. And then they asked us to, everyone that had attended, they gave us the opportunity to crew. Now, I didn't get the email um my partner did and he wow. wasn't really into this whole personal development world and everything like he was a business owner and he was getting it but he wasn't really into it like I was and um he forwarded me the email so I phoned them up and I was like I'm interested I want to come along yeah. and I ended up being one of their coaches and now I'm one of the main team and wow. um, I've recently been been offered if he does anything like this again, because after COVID, power to achieve stopped and all these bigger events stopped. But to actually take over and actually help manage and, and run the events. Wow. So I've worked my way up. Um, and I jokingly said to one of the sales guys the other day, because he wanted me to help out another event. I said, no, sorry. I said, somebody else has got me for that week. I said, you got you hurry up now, I'm in demand. <laughs> <laughs> Yay! <laughs> no, good on you. But, um, <laughs> I mean, it, you know, we, we just have a laugh. It's, it's funny and it's just, it's lovely that, you know, I've built up such a great community of great communities in everything that yes. I do. Because obviously I met Jesson through Andy. I met the sales team for Andy. I met Dee and Cheryl Chapman um and they're all really good friends of mine really close you know we we talk on a, a personal um level as well as a business level as well cool. and it's just lovely to be around the, the, that community and they're always very supportive they are um you know they're just there when you need them and um yeah really really great people to be around oh no that's that's great to hear that because um you know, when you you come across, didn't you feel that it's a different feeling, you know, where, you know, when you're coming from as an audience, where you were actually working alongside Andy himself, because it's different where I noticed that, I don't know how you must have felt in, a, in that position where at the time, you know, you obviously your roles have switched now, where you was on the opposite, the, the opposite side, you know, on the flip side of it, where you was witnessing what was going on you had to work towards something you know and achieving it and getting the results and then this time now you're actually on a different level yeah a different scale you're, you're you're no longer the audience you're actually part of the team yeah yeah that's the thing though I mean when I explained it to like friends and family when they said to me oh you know you're in the speaking world you know, you're doing these gigs for free, you're doing all this stuff for other people, when are you going to get some, like, decent money for it? And I I said, it's like being an actress, you know, you've got to do all the rubbish jobs first. You've got to be there at every single moment because all, anyone that's ever made a name for themselves have always started at the bottom and they yes. have grafted hard and so much respect to anybody that grafts for to to hone their skill and get to where they need to be and then that's when they get recognized that's when they keep showing up they keep turning up they keep making the tea and scrubbing the loos if they have to and then they get noticed they get that one role because someone didn't show up or you know something happened and they or and they're just there at the right time and that can take their career to the next level um and I just said, you know, it's like that. You've just got to keep showing up and you've got to always be ready for whatever is thrown at you, you know, and be able to to just do it and show that you're that you're capable. And um, 
so yeah I've just been trained now every opportunity to say yes <laughs> no good no at good on moment, you and at the moment now I've got to start saying no because you know some some speaking gigs are just not for me I'm getting a lot of people in the property world and even though I am in property I don't want to be known as a property speaker so I have to say no to some of those um but I support them in other ways because you know that's what we do in the speaking world we we support each other so I might go and crew for them or something like that but I don't want to be like the face of that yes. company so yeah I understand yes it's the same with myself. I've noticed that, um, you know, I've spoken to a lot of people where they say to me, because one of my passions, apart from um, the personal development side, is martial arts and basketball. And, um, you know, someone said to me, oh, why don't you show more basketball? Why don't you show more martial arts? And I'm like, well, this is my show. You know, the show is not about being one dimensional. You know, I I like to have guests where you know if they've been on before like yourself yeah if they've got any updates it'll be good to have them back you know get some feedback and an up-to-date of how they're doing you know it's good to have that and then if you've got some newer guests you know um, that will come up with a different sector you know that will um, surprise a lot of other people it won't just entertain them but it may even give them some great value that other people didn't even realize you know I could share with you know with with other people because you don't know there might be something that I haven't even gone into yet and realized I thought well actually this is pretty interesting and other people will say well actually yeah that's a good idea wow where did you get that from I think well it's more about asking the community asking the people you know out there well I say well is there anything out there that I haven't mentioned or I haven't you know um gone into yet in those areas of where I thought well I haven't mentioned this I haven't mentioned that have I tried this have I tried that and I think, you know, it gets to the point of where as long as you're serving those uh, in the in need of your services, you know, in the right areas, then, I, you know, I don't mind either, you know, like yourself, you know, you've got so many different areas and sectors that people may need of your help, but then you can't do everything. You know, you can only do certain areas that will be more suited to you because I think everyone wants to try and help everyone, but then it might not always suit them or yourself you just need to have that kind of merge where you feel you think well actually I'm suited to this thank you for offering it to me because you know you can't be everywhere you know as much as we want to you can't you can't do everything you know all at once that is that is true yeah and it, I think when you really have an idea of really what you do and how you serve people you do kind of you have to niche it down because like you said you you can't serve everyone um but with sports um you know like there's a lot of stuff that you can learn about yourself about your mindset there's all the, there's the discipline that goes with it um so yeah I'm sure there'll be um there'll be a few people I've got in mind actually that I want to introduce you to <laughs> yeah oh no I appreciate that thank you Karina on here, this is the next question, actually. You mentioned that. I'm glad you mentioned that, actually. Tell us a little bit about your book, because I wanted to mention something, because there was a few, there were a few questions where I'm reverting back. I'm, I'm being very cheeky here, audience, because I've, I've got some questions here, but I've jumbled up a little bit. So it's to be expected, the questions, but not necessarily mean it's going to be all in the right order because it makes it a bit more interesting <laughs> I think it just Ooh. flows as the conversation flows I don't exactly. mind <laughs> yeah exactly yeah tell us a little bit about your book and what you've been working on recently and when is it out uh, for those who'd be interested in purchasing it in the foreseeable future so the book is for business owners um existing business owners and it's aimed more at coaches, consultants, therapists, and any service-based business, anyone that we have to deal with clients on a regular basis and are face-to-face -face or over the phone. Um, because it's all about mindset and how we show up and how our client may show up in different ways right, and yeah. how to 
communicate, understand herself, understand how we communicate and understand how other people communicate. So you can build a better rapport with your client. Of course. Um, And it's all about, you know, we can go through a lot of personal problems, personal challenges and how that shows up in your business. Because when you're at work, when you go to work, you just go to work, you do your job, you go home, your boss deals with all the stress and the strain of the business. You know, you can have a day off and get unpaid, you can get paid or unpaid leave. You can go on holiday, you can apply for your holidays and go on holiday. But when you're in a business, you are all of those things. You are the boss, you are HR, you are marketing team, you are everyone. And that's when all the personal stuff shows up as well. Oh, you yeah. can't just, I was always told when I worked in travel, if you've got a problem at home, you leave it at the door when you walk in the office. But I'm in my office all the time. My office is in my head. I'm constantly Strange. thinking about my business. Strange. And when you've got proper personal problems going on, um, it affects your business. So there's a there's a lot of my story in there. Um, and how I dealt with my own personal emotions, my own thoughts, how thoughts can manifest into into more challenges later on down the line and how to deal with those. And then, you know, so it helps with your business Um, because things can trigger us. You know, we could have a, one day we could have a conversation with someone would be fine. And the next thing someone could say something and it would trigger us. Of course. Is that coming from, from before maybe someone said something to you when you was a child and you know you might have you know there might be some self-belief stuff going on there or you might be procrastinating right now because you fear success a lot of people say oh you're fear of failure but fear of success is very very high um and I think that's probably what I was fearing myself um and you just kind of got to let go of those reins and just just run with it, you know? Yeah. So it's all about that. So it's very much about mindset. It's about motivation. It's about having mental clarity, um, building your confidence. And as I like to say, believing in your wings and fly. <laughs> yes, no, that's true. You know, I, no, this is, this is going to be a great book. I, I wouldn't mind reading it myself, actually, to be honest with you. It's, Sounds like the kind of book that I'd like to read on the bedside, you know, just to make sure I thought, oh, this is pretty interesting. Because, you know, sometimes I revert back to even like films, you know, sometimes when you see a film, it's not always the same as how you read it, you know, it's how it's depicted. And, you know, notice that I've noticed that I've read a book before and I thought, oh, no, wow, this is interesting. And then you re- revert back because this is why it's, interesting when you actually read the book and then when you watch the film that's been mm. sort of coincided with it where it, it's out and you think well hang on a minute how comes this has happened and it's not happening in here and you think oh wow oh I know because it's not always the same you know you can't visualize the same what's on the book yes as in, like, what you've put on the film and then in the film you think well oh actually they've done quite well with that how they've managed to capture the emotions because sometimes you have to have something where the person's capturing the person's emotions how it would be not in a physical aspect but also in the emotional attachment and then your mind you know the the psychological part as well because it's when someone has to read through that like imagine if they was to create that kind of performance as a role if it was to come from your book and they've turned it into a film it'd be like wow it'd be amazing because it'd be interesting to see what it'd be like from you know that perspective from the, the emotional attachment and the psychological and the physical all all of it all all into rolled into one as that character because you know when you when you see something in the film you can really capture you know the emotions because I remember the last time I was watching something and I thought wow how do they do that and then when I watched when I watched it, I revert it back because you know when you haven't seen something for a while, you you watch it again, and yeah. then you read back to the book, and you think, "Wow, that wasn't in there," and you think that's a surprise. Where's it gone? And you think, "Ah, oh, you know that was really good in the book." And then you wanted you you wondered why you know why didn't they not put that in there? Because sometimes 
you know, I think it's good to have that in a book, you know, because when you see it in words and you when you read it, you can sort of have that initial extra imagination, you know, in your mind and you could you can yeah. put that in yourself as well, you know, because sometimes story, you know, I've had stories where as much as interesting as they are, others have sort of jazzed it up a little bit. But what I like is the real raw stuff, you yeah. know, because I, I, before I used to read something and I'd go, oh, that's in the films. Like, oh, oh that's a bit, <sighs> you know, you think, oh, it's being nail biting or sort of like you want to go, oh, coming up and then when you turn the page you're like oh okay <laughs> yeah he's gone from like really melodramatic to like Ooh, and then he's gone back up again you think oh you want to turn the page again or like another another chapter or a different book yeah. you know you know like that so in that respect i i'm of from my own personal view myself you know I, it, it sounds like it's going to be a very interesting book you know i'd i'd refer it to anybody Karina because you know even knowing yourself personally you know even off the camera um it'd be great you know just to hear you know what you have to say in the book because a lot of times you know when you have something interpreted on paper mm. it's so different you know when people look at it you know what what was it is this your first book you know just to let the audience know or is there is there other books that you've got planned in the foreseeable future as well well yeah this is my first book and I started writing it probably about four years ago. And again, the self-belief, the procrastination, yes. all that's yes. like him. And I'd written probably just over half of it. Mm. Yeah. And I met a lady who wanted to come out of um, writing blogs for businesses. So I sent her the manuscript and she like helped me with it. But yeah. she was more of a creative writer. Right. Um, and my story sounded a bit flat, you know, because I know my story. So I'm writing my story as I know it. But she, and like you said, when it's in a book, when you're reading a book, it the, the images have to, the, the reader has to create their own images. So I just felt that it needed jazzing up, if you like. Yeah, um, of course. She helped me with it. And uh, when she sent me like her versions back, I was like, I was reading it. And I'm like, oh my God, what happens next? And I'm like, hold on, this is my story. I've already written this book. What did you do with my story? I love it, I love it. She was absolutely fantastic. And, um, and as well, when you write your own book, it's very easy to keep going back, taking bits out, changing things. Cool. So when I kind of said, right, you can make it re more read readable for for the for the audience for the readers of course um and you know it stops that self-doubt it stops that procrastination I wasn't the bottleneck to get it finished and I think sometimes people get so hung up on oh my god it's my book I have to write it and I have to write everything and I have to proofread it myself I have to edit it myself and I have to do everything myself it doesn't it's not getting the book out there um so I'm quite you know quite happy to say that I I had help with it because sometimes you are the bottleneck in getting your book out and people need to read the story and so yeah so then um obviously got the editing team involved got the um the front cover yesterday actually mm. um all designed it's really really good I love the front exciting <laughs> Um, it's for men and women it's not just for women um same with my coaching I don't just focus on women um and so I wanted it to be suitable for everyone the, you know all business owners men and women to read the book and get inspired by it hey. no that sounds like a exciting times are happening uh, you know with with your book I, I look forward to reading it Karina and here also what's your favorite meal just to jazz things up a little bit do you have a favorite meal i'd probably say turkish food Ooh. i love turkish food Lovely. when growing up 
uh, my mum had a lot of Turkish friends, um, Cypriot friends. Yes. And we'd go around their house and have dinner and she would cook stuff at home and I'd always be there watching her cooking. Nice. Um, so I think that's probably my favourite meal, like if I went to a nice restaurant. Um, but then again, I do love my English cooking. My nan used to cook the roast dinner and used to smell it on a Sunday. Oh. Uh, so, yeah. Nice. What mood I'm in. <laughs> yeah, no, I don't blame you. It's like, I'll, I, it, it just makes me even, every time I mention food, because I, um, I, I've got this question that I've always wanted to ask uh, a lot of the guests before and this is why I keep asking it now you know because I've got I like my food you know there's nothing else other than just you know the sh other than just the show that we the type of questions that most people expect I like to throw in a meal or anything that's involved cooking because I, I I like to cook as well and I'm like oh I, I, love, like, even, I love cooking oh it's like it's just one of those things like the met someone mentions food and I'm like right I'm there <laughs> oh my goodness the other question is do you have a favorite dessert from brulee oh nice I love yeah, yeah. love love creme brulee I remember the very first time I had it mm. um and I was just like oh my god what is this <laughs> <laughs> I'll have some more of that. <laughs> <laughs> oh. I had it twice at the weekend, actually. With, uh, oh, you lucky lady. <laughs> <laughs> I'm making the most of this. I'm in a nice fancy hotel. <laughs> yeah, no, why not? You know, go go for it. You know, do you have any pets? Just to let the audience know, do you have any pets? I do. I have two cats, both oh, rescues, yeah. both black cats. Um, when I first got, when I've got my first cat, she was rescued. A friend of mine's garden, she was meowing in a really bad storm and um, I took her in. And um, I didn't want pets at the time, but absolutely fell in love with her as soon as she came in the door. And um, then my second cat, then I've obviously researched about cats and, you know, looking after them and stuff. I found out that black cats are the most ones to to not be rehomed because even now they're still seen as being unlucky so I was adamant that I was going to get another black cat so I drove all the way to Chelsea at 10 o'clock wow. at night to rescue this little five five week old kitten oh. and he's a big boy now. <laughs> and he loves his food as well <laughs> <laughs> I, bet, I bet he does goodness me wow <laughs> A little little fur baby, we call them, didn't they? I absolutely love cats because they're, you know, they're so independent, um, and they've got such beautiful, the, the completely different personalities. They're such good company, um, and yeah, they're, they're lovely. <laughs> oh, bless them. Okay, do you have any favourite films? Um. I'd probably say the classic ones, like, um, I mean, I love anything with Julia Roberts in it. Yes. And... Ooh. If, I like, I like, I like Julia Roberts. The Christmas films as, well. films as well. Oh, yeah. Like Home Alone and stuff. Oh, like yeah. That. Um, I'm not really big into films because I do work quite a lot. Mm. Um. And when I have like downtime, I probably prefer to sleep. <laughs> oh, that's understandable. Um, or, you know, I watch like a lot of documentaries and stuff like that. Because oh, yeah. I'm really into psychology. So I love mm. watching anything to do with psychology. Um, I love mm. watching that. But yeah, I love, you know, like having a, a, a duvet day at Christmas and just watching Christmas films all day long. Yeah. Uh, and when I watch a film, it normally has to be a funny film. Yes, yes. I, I like those. They've said, actually, um, I was listening to a podcast, I can't remember who it was, though. Um, he said that he watches something funny, like a comedy show or, um, um, oh, what's that? I think of the comedian, the, com the English guy, comedian. Um, very British. Um, oh, I'm trying to remember who. I can't think of his name. It'll come to me in a minute. 
but he watches comedy films, right? Comedy sketches every single night before he goes to sleep. Right. Okay. It puts your mind in a positive mode before you sleep. Good and idea. You wake up more positive because when you're worrying about things before you go to bed, then it goes into your unconscious mind when you sleep and <clears> then <throat> manifests more and more throughout the next day. So, um, yeah, so anything I normally watch in the evening before I go to sleep is normally a funny film. Or... Oh, do you know what? I can relate to that. I've... The strangest thing is it's a, it's a mixture between like a rom-com comedy mm. or um, like one of these like, really odd comedy like I've gone from old school comedy to like Eddie Murphy where there was um I love the impressions that he makes it's, it it never gets old when um there was one in um Beverly Hills Cop when mm -hmm. he actually puts a banana and it sticks it right in the back of the the, the exhaust pipe and the cops yeah. are trying to chase him you know you, you got there um the two two other um Oh, was it? Um, yeah, Beverly Hills, Beverly Hills, uh, the, the cops there, both of them there, they're both detectives and you've got Eddie Murphy there as Axel and they're all there going, hello, hi, and he goes off and he's like, <coughs> and they're, they're trying to move and they're like, what's the matter, what's, what's the matter with my car? And then you hear the, there's a bit when he does an impression of the guy, is this the man who stuck a banana in the tailpipe? And then they're like, oh. It gets me every time, and I'm like, because he's like, don't don't say it too loud, because the, the guy the the guy is over in the other side of the room, you know, like in reality, it it get chucked out straight away. It's like when he does all the impressions. Oh, I, I just I love a really funny story about Eddie Murphy, actually. Ooh. Um, <laughs> my one of my ex partners, his auntie went over to America, okay. and years ago, you know, when it was quite bad like gun crime and all that I mean well it's still it but she uh, she gets into a lift in a quite fancy hotel and Eddie Murphy like runs into the lift he goes hit the ground and she was like oh my god I'm being mugged or something you know she was like you know how he is he's very like you know out there and um she she dived onto the floor and he went what are you doing he was like I mean, hit the ground, like the ground floor. I'm going downstairs. And she was like, oh, 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 I'm really sorry. I'm really sorry. Because she's like giving him her, her handbag and everything. <laughs> <laughs> she, didn't, she didn't know who Eddie Murphy was. <laughs> but you know his really distinctive laugh. You know, yeah. that, like, oh, 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 laugh. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he started laughing uncontrollably. And then he explained who he was. And he was so, he said it entertained him so much, he paid for her hotel bill and an evening meal. He said, you are so funny. He went and he said, and watch some of my films. So that night she was there in a hotel room watching his films and she was like, oh my God, I can't believe I did that. <laughs> oh wow, that's amazing. That's a great story. I love things like that. Oh my goodness. This is, this is what happened, you see. Some, that's what I like it. When you're being yourself, you don't know where you could be. You're doing something. But then sometimes, you know, when you, you, you get this pretense, false, falseness, where you, I don't think we do it intentionally. I think we all have this persona where we all naturally do it. We don't even realise we're doing it sometimes where, you know, when they say that when you talk to someone, sometimes you put on a telephone voice rather than your own voice. Yeah. It's like with me, like when I'm on the phone, it's like, hello, this is Phil. <laughs> how are you doing he's like good. hello good morning this is phil how can i help you and i'm like my mum one time she said who are you talking to i said you're not in an office i'm like oh yeah, yeah, yeah don't worry it's like and then all of a sudden you know it depends on which which um best way of putting it if it's number one if it's not business related yeah. or it can be on a personal level where i oh it's so funny i've, I've even done impressions on the phones and um I think I've caught some people off guard and um, people don't realise that it's me or if it's the other way around and I've picked the phone up and I've done so many different things, it's hilarious. And some people have laughed and they've almost fallen for it. And, or even, they haven't even just fallen for it. They've just been them. 
just being yeah. genuine bless them and they can't help it you know you could be like on the phone I'll have to send you something off the camera and it was hilarious because there was one guy I think it was um one one guy was sending something to someone and they had to say something over the tannoy and then when they said it they were like oh, shouldn't have said that <laughs> oh yeah I've seen those videos yeah yeah there was one, yeah, there was one of, you know when you get things over the tannoy or or things like that on the phone so yeah, yeah I think I think people do things, you know, without realising. I think that's a great story because it shows how genuine people are. You know, when, when you see someone, sometimes you just think, oh, shall I be all formal and, and act like that? But whereas when you're being yourself, you bring out, a lot of people think, oh, you know, that's not the best part of me. I said, well, I think it is the best part of you because you are genuine. You're being you, being yeah. yourself. And it shows that other people, like, if, like, for example, they weren't doing that who knows what would have happened you know with Eddie Murphy on that time then you know that story you, you don't know no you know if you don't take it in the way where I think he because he realized how genuine it was yeah you know and out of respect as a more more of a thank you you know for being like you know downplaying it because some people downplay it don't they you know it's like oh you know it's Eddie Murphy you know we know who he is and or whoever that is you know and you know and downplay it but then people can just foresee that they just look, they look at it and I think mm, you know I'm, I'm used to it someone will go oh, excuse me can I have an autograph you know have a selfie you know and and all of that and then when you walk off you just think well you don't actually really know them whereas some yeah. people they don't know who it is you wouldn't even know you know we could be anywhere anywhere in the world and when like you mentioned it could be in in the middle of town somewhere in Chelmsford or in the middle of London somewhere or Trafalgar Square you don't know who you might meet yeah. and something happens and it's how you how you deal with the situation and but that was an incredible story is like just like hit the ground and you're like okay <laughs> down you think no it's not it's not a hold up or anything like that here's my handbag here's my satchel or whatever or whatever here you go here's my wallet <laughs> I don't know what I would have done to be honest with you because like sometimes we when you get caught off guard, it's how you phrase things. Sometimes this is what I mean, you know, you don't know, you don't know how to react, but I, that's incredible, you know, because it's, it's how you word things, isn't it? It's like for us here, uh, we, we've got like, um, we call it a pathway, but they call it a sidewalk. Sidewalk, yeah. Yeah, and things like that, you know, like um, there's so many different slangs that they've got they hear, you know, you, you, you wouldn't know what on earth they were talking about because some of the things that like they said, um, what was it um yeah we call it a boot but they don't they call it something else don't they you know where you you open the trunk or something it's a trunk isn't it open yeah, the trunk, like open the trunk and then you think well you're an elephant, I <laughs> an elephant. Well, you can, and you open their trunk they've got two holes at the front of the the, the nostril you know where, where the, the, the trunk ends and begins and then i you know you i was totally on totally honest with you i i wasn't sure how certain things are because I had to be explained to some uh, by someone before um, a f good friend and American uh, guy when I was at, um, at school, at high school. We've had some, um, you know, you have foreign exchange students, yeah. and uh, they had to explain to me as well. And they were, like, they were laughing because of what we would call certain things and what they would call certain things as well. And we had to, we kind of exchanged a few things, and then you realise you thought, ah. It's not what you thought it would be. <laughs> and they start laughing. They're like, oh, that's what it is. I wonder what that word meant. <laughs> I said, whatever you do, don't do that. Because if you say <laughs> that, you know, you'll get a different reaction over here. <laughs> yes. Yes. Like a ride. Instead of a, here, we call it a lift. Would you like a lift? Over there, they say, would you like a ride? Hmm. And that could be perceived as something different. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So this is what I mean. I said you have to be careful what you say and where you are, because it's not to, it's not it's not always the same what you're saying interpretation to what you're telling them. You know wherever you are. Yeah, a lot of people in the in Europe, um, they learn American English. Yes. So when I was flying and I worked with like people in Sweden or Denmark or you know they would speak a lot of American English. Um, and because I said to them, like, where did you where did you learn your English from? And they were like, you know, watching like friends and 
you know, growing up, they'd like listen to, to friends and American shows and things like that. And that's how they would learn their English. Um, okay. And a lot, well, a lot of um, places, countries, they actually learn English as a second language anyway, like Malta. They have to learn English as a second language. Um, and I think then the third language is Italy. Surprisingly, because Italy's right next door to them, you'd think they'd learn Italian first or second, but they don't, they learn English. And that's why they're very fluent in English. Wow. I've learned something there. I, I like this. <laughs> yeah, I've, I've been to, to Malta a lot, a lot. And I used to have an old boss that used to, was Maltese. So, um, yeah, I used to go into the office and it'd be shouting and he'd be waving his arms around and I'd walk into the office I'd be like is everything okay and he's like yeah, I'm just my friend I'm like oh I thought you were having an argument <laughs> <laughs> but Maltese and um and Italian they're very like you know loud yeah. and use their hands and you know and um yeah I was just like oh okay <laughs> they're very expressive aren't they in, in, in <laughs> yeah they're very expressive and eloquent with with, with how they feel so it's when oh, they yes. when they mention something it's like you can really feel you know you think oh yeah they emphasize with their words you know they don't just use the hands they actually, you can actually feel yeah what they're, what they're saying to you so when they do that you think well that's good because you know they're it's the passion within the words, you know, when they're talking about something, it's mm. it's no longer just a conversation. It's, you know, the passion behind it. And you think oh, they're emphasizing on every single thing, what they're talking about in the conversation. So it makes it more yeah. interesting, you know, rather than to be one of this sort of monotone things. Because so, you can feel it, like you mentioned, when you walked in, you're like, it's no longer like, well, all right, mate, how's your day been? And you're like, mm, yeah, okay. <laughs> I won't ask again then and just walk off whereas it was more of you can feel it and you can even hear it even before you actually entered the room because you know when you go in I've had that I've, I even before I've entered the conversation or joined in with something you think oh my goodness you can feel feel something you know within the conversation and then sometimes you get it right and sometimes you get it wrong and you just think well hang on a minute before I, I jump in I want to make sure I'm, I'm not getting into something here so like I thought right don't get involved but then when you walk in they go oh come on you think oh that was a different feeling I got there <laughs> like one moment it sounded very like aggressive but it's not aggressive it's passionate passionate isn't it? yeah yeah this is it this is what I love I love about language mentioning languages do you speak any other languages I don't um I learned Spanish um so I can read it and I can understand it but I don't speak it, um, which was quite handy once because I got lost in Paris once. And the only person I saw for like half an hour walking around the streets, back streets of Paris, was a guy, um, a Spanish guy, and he gave me directions in Spanish. Wow. And I managed wow. to find my way back to the Eiffel Tower, so I knew where I was from there. Oh, wow, that's that's brilliant. You know, it's, it's, that's ironic, isn't it? He's like, oh, I'm in France. <laughs> different person there speaking Spanish and then they're actually helping me so you know it, it's helpful you know, regardless of where you are it's helpful, it's helpful to know some things yeah <laughs> um oh. we didn't have mobile phones and all that back in the day you couldn't just yeah. speak into a phone and translate it yeah. um yeah. so yeah I just had to to understand the the very basic directions and got back to where I should be <laughs> oh good on you that's your if there was any other language that you uh, you you could choose apart from Spanish or anything else in English, what other language would you choose? And if you had any choice that you you know you could do, if you had the choice right now, and you could go, oh, I could just speak that right now. What would you what would you be speaking? I'd probably say Chinese. Oh yeah, it's a very very difficult language to learn. Um, yeah, very. Yeah, I'd love, I'd love to to learn Chinese. Yeah, because there's so there's so many so many different well, uh, dialects as well. There's yeah. more di more dialects than you you'd expect because I I didn't realise this either. You know, because you've got you've got um, Cantonese, Mandarin, and you've got other other dialects that are in there. Like even old school languages that some people don't even realise is a language. 
Mm. You know, I've been watching sort of other YouTube and YouTubers as well, where there was a there's a gentleman there, he he learns a language after a certain period of time. And it's a language that some people wouldn't expect them to speak on an everyday sort of daily basis. You know, it's more of one of those where I think it's only mainly that the native country of where it comes from, you know, like old school, you know, where it's it's been taught by within that country. But if you know that person um, that speaks that particular language, yeah. Uh, pretty well I think it's it's an advantage because then at least when you're learning that then when you go out and you speak that you, you get some some eyes and eyebrows up but thinking oh this is interesting you didn't expect that person to to be speaking that to me you know or, or you're even trying you know it's nice when you're trying as well because you just think oh they're actually communicating to me you know and I, I would have expected them to speak English to me but they're not they're actually speaking my native language or they're speaking another language that you didn't expect them to speak and they're listening listening out to it and you think oh that accent or that voice you know that's come out of that person's mouth and you just think wow I love things like that it's very intriguing yeah I think it's just courtesy as well and you when you go to someone's country you should learn the culture and try the food and try to speak the language um and I very much even if I can't grasp the language, I tend to, my accent changes. Yes. Um, I can go up north and I could come back with like a Yorkshire accent or I can go, uh, yes. when I came back from Malta, I ended up, you know, speaking to the cab driver on the way home and I was like, where is this accent coming from? It was just happened naturally. Um, but yeah, when I go away, like I always you know when I ask the hotel where could I go to eat and they say oh you know the you know there's some nice bars and retro there's an English bar down there I'm like no 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 no. where do the locals go I want to go to the I want to go I mean I've been to restaurants where they don't even speak English they've handed me the menu that's not even in English uh luckily it was in Spain again so I could read read the menu um and I just said you know just just bring me what is your best food and I'll eat it because I just want to try what what they have, what their you know, local delicacy is, or um, their their traditional thing, you know. Even if it's like drinks, they'll have like the the local pint or the the local cocktail, or yeah. you know whatever their local thing is to have. I will always mm -hmm. have it because you have to immerse yourself in the environment that you're in. Otherwise, you don't make the most of it. No, that's true. You know, I think we just forget ourselves, you know, of how we should be able to feel, you know, within that environment. I think sometimes if you're caught up within like a daily routine that you feel that when you're not away from that, you tend to take it for granted, don't you? You know, you think, well, I might not come here to this place again, maybe for another year or two. You don't know what's going to happen. So you make the best of it while you're there, you know, with every single drink f uh, food meal experience that you have because this is still an experience and it's it's very um very uh, very important to to um to be able to sort of uh feel every moment you know and experience every moment on there because it's i've noticed this as well you know i'm i'm guilty of this of it as well you know when you when you eat food and you think oh you, you're out of hun hunger but it's different you know I, I mentioned this to, to a number of people when you eat something now I don't eat because I'm hung I'm just hungry when I eat it I actually taste it okay. and when, when you really taste it and I'm like oh wow I said when I if you tried it before when you've done that you're like, <laughs> did you taste it yeah a little bit what was it like and then and you can't describe it because you just it's gone yeah. and like when you actually taste it and you think cool oh, wow that's what it actually felt like before yeah and it's an amazing feeling because you just think well if you don't eat that kind of food all the time but then when you actually savor it it's the 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 feeling is is amazing it's different isn't it you know when you when you do that I think we tend to have this kind of mentality sometimes where you just think when you when you have something you just have it and then it's gone. So they're just filling that gap or that void where you think, oh, my, my hunger's gone now, rather than just enjoying the meal. 
Yeah. And it's so easy, especially when you're busy, you know, entrepreneurs, they'll just grab some toast on the way out the door. They'll be drinking seven, eight cups of coffee a day to keep themselves awake and alert. And when you actually sit there and think, what's that actually doing to your health? Um, it can have a detrimental effect, maybe not now, but later on down the line. Yes. Um, and I've stopped like drinking coffee. Uh, I don't drink, I won't have a cup of coffee until at least 11 o'clock in the morning. Um, and I'll probably only have one and that'll be it. Um, if, you know, maybe I'm a bit tired, I'm at an event or something and I've had quite a long few days, I may have a coffee or a few more during that during the day um i try to drink as you know healthy as possible or um you know drink, just try and drink more water as well um but it is it's very easy to get into an un unhealthy lifestyle when you're busy true. no very very true the other question is What's the funniest experience you can ever remember for yourself? There's probably been quite a few, but the one that just came to mind when you asked me, um, I went to um, a racetrack. I can't remember what it was called now. It wasn't Brands Hatch. It was one of like, well, I say the smaller ones, but they're all quite big, aren't they? went to this racetrack um they had this event going on with um it's the guy that opens his manor manor house um wow. every year and he has all like the formula one cars there um wow. i can't think what it, what it was but this particular year was a massive manor house and they had the two Mercedes, like the first Mercedes car and the latest one over his mansion it, on this stand. It was really lovely. It was really phenomenal. So we decided to go and be nosy after the event because they had the car races and they had the very first driver of Mercedes and then Lewis, Lewis Hamilton at the time were racing each other. Which I thought must have been amazing for Lewis Hamilton. That must have been a really proud moment. So after that, we went, we was nosy around the grounds and um, they had all these gates across this, this like farm track and um, said, oh, should we go in there? Should we go and be nosy? So I feel really brave. So I'm driving down this track, drive through this gate, and all of a sudden this track is coming towards us. And I just really, really freaked out. And I was like, tractor, tractor. And I'm trying to reverse, but it's muddy. <laughs> I'm stuck in the mud. The mud's going up the car. And all I'm going is tractor, tractor. <laughs> and I couldn't reverse quick enough. <laughs> All of a sudden, because you know when you you know when you're somewhere where you're not supposed to be, and um, I just yeah, we we got out and I, I drove off. But I was like, oh, I'm never doing that again. And then he goes, but I thought you were feeling brave. I was like, yeah, but I'm not now. <laughs> <laughs> I, do some, I do. I I I'm a natural blonde. I do some bitsy things sometimes. Um, but oh, yeah. yeah dear. It was, yeah, at the time, it was it was really funny. Oh, bless you. <laughs> <laughs> well, tractor driver must have been thinking, what is she doing? There's mud flying everywhere. And <laughs> Those are the best moments. What's your favourite <laughs> music and song? Uh, my favourite music, I would probably say, I like the Chill Out Ibiza stuff. Yeah. Um, and I listen to a lot of that. The one, most of the ones that are just the, the melody without the words, I've, I listen to that right. when I'm working. I mm. listen to that when I'm just relaxing in my little comfy chair, reading in the evening, um, some candles and my incense yeah. burning, yes. and just really nice chill out Ibiza stuff. I think that's yeah. my favourite. Oh, yeah, sounds, sounds good. You know, why not? You know, if it's I like things like that as well. Sometimes without any words, you know, you just got that mellow music where you just chill, yeah. chill out. I like that. You know, something in the evening where it just 
rather than one that makes you feel more upbeat, you got one where you feel like you want to unwind and it's relaxing. It's yeah. one of those. Yeah. No, that's fair enough. I like the party stuff and like the 60s music when I'm cleaning the house and I'm like dancing around and my cats are looking at me thinking, oh, she's crazy again. <laughs> and then <laughs> they, all of a sudden they want to go out because they think, oh no, mum's gone mad. Let's, let's, let's just crazy go. lady mode. <laughs> fair enough. Did you have a favourite programme? Uh, you loved watching when you was a child did you have one yeah all the classic ones like button moon fraggle rock oh yes the dinosaur one you know the, the one that goes I'm... nothing mama nothing mama i yeah. love that I, thought, I used to laugh my head off as a kid um it came back for a little while a few years yeah. ago and i was yeah. so excited I like it. The same watching it as an adult as when you watch it as a kid. I mean, it was good and it brought back lots of memories, but it wasn't as funny as I remembered it to be. <laughs> oh. oh no, I, I like I like that one with it. I've mm. actually got. I'm not sure. I've got. I'm gonna have to find it. I'll wear it next time. I've got the not the mama t-shirt. Oh, have you? Oh, oh have you? there's a picture. I'll send it to you. I've got one where I think it was given to me. As a gift and a surprise, like a white T-shirt with a little baby dinosaur going, not the mama, not the mama. Oh, that's so cool. And it's, it's going like that. Oh. And it, on the top it says, not the mama. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Oh, I just thought, oh, that's so funny. He's like, oh, yeah, no, that's one of my favourite ones that I used to like watching. Did you have a favourite toy when you was younger? Oh. Not that I think of. Probably my doll's house. Yeah. Now, this is actually quite interesting considering what I do now. Um, but I used to make up like stories and mix Brilliant. my dolls around, you know. Yeah. And um Ken used to have an affair with Cindy and <laughs> and my mum always used to say it was better than watching the soaps. We should be like, so what have they been up to today? And I'm like, well, Ken's just got it got in the car. He's had a big row with 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 Barbie. And Cindy's and now since she's just found out that he's having an affair with Cindy and the baby's not his. And uh and she's like, Yeah, carry on. Um so yeah, I was very um had a, a, an imagination when I was a child. Wow. I think it's probably because my mum used to watch soaps and then I used to like go and play with my dolls. And I suppose, you know, before the age of seven, you don't really have a conscious mind. It all goes into your unconscious. So when you're doing stuff, it's just because you've seen that. Um, yeah, exactly. Do that all the time. Yeah. Oh, wow. No, that's, <laughs> that, that's, that's pretty interesting. I like this. Oh, wow. The other question is, do you sing in the shower? <laughs> sometimes. Sometimes. Yeah, sometimes I do. Do you use a hairbrush or do you use the first thing that comes to mind? You just go, ah, just randomly sing something. No, I do, I do sing. I do do my little dance. And then um, I'm like, okay, I need to get ready now. Like, hurry up. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, and it's always when you're in the shower and I'm all the most inconvenient place where you get ideas yeah. come as well like you know for like my speaking or work or something like that um and it's always Fair when enough. you're relaxing you're in the shower yes. you're driving that all the good ideas come and you can't that's write true. Them down and I'm like oh <laughs> no that's true no that's true they it's always when your mind's so relaxed this thing just comes up and you think oh I better write that down but you're like, oh, I can't because I'm driving and you're like oh I can't because I've got something yeah. else and you, so you, have, you try and sort of process that and think, right, well, what can I do to remember that, to put, you know, put that onto paper or, or on my phone or something like that. So, yeah. yeah, I'm, I'm a good one for that. I have to, I've got something that will spring to mind. You think, oh, that's a good idea. Should I do that? You think, mm, and then I thought, well, no, don't self doubt that. That is as absurd and funny and as weird it might be. It's actually probably a good thing. Because yeah. that's how your mind works, isn't it? When it's relaxed, you've got all these, things that sort of that that it's our mind and our brain is like a sieve we have all these thoughts and feelings all happening at once and it's just like a satellite isn't it you just like 
absorb everything. And yeah. then when you're most relaxed, that's when the best thoughts come out and ideas, like you mentioned, and you're like, oh, oh, oh no. Yeah, so your conscious mind's not there to then block it and say, oh, that's a silly idea. Yes, that's true. Because what I do now, I've got, I've got a pen and a pad, which is probably in my bag, and near the bedside that I've got back there, I, I would, I would sort of look, write, jot it down, and I'm like, oh, that's a good idea. And then sometimes I think, well, actually, I don't know, maybe it sounds a bit wacky or funny, but then. Then like you have to when then when you read into it a bit more, you think, well, actually, that's not too bad idea. You know, I should try that. <laughs> yeah. And if I do forget by the time I get to my destination, I think, well, it's probably not probably not a good idea anyway. Um, but I do have like a little uh, mm. dictaphone in my car as well, if I think of anything. No, good, so, good. Know, like, so I normally voice note into like, a little dictaphone if I think it's if I think it's a really good idea. No, good on you. You know, it's it's a, g- a good idea to do that because then, you know, that's the things that you incorporate as part of who you are, isn't it? You know, that that brings out the best of you. You know, in in things in those situations. Yeah. Do you have a favourite game like Monopoly or Trivial Pursuit or Charades, anything like that? Do you have any sort of favourite games? Mm, not really. No. I don't no? think played any games like that since I was a kid mm-hmm. um I used to play mousetrap when I was a kid <laughs> oh wow yeah no I like I, I, like, things like, that. Right, I like things like that because then it kind of what's the best way of putting it is it's like comedy but like that kind of sort of without having to be embarrassed about it because you think it's funny you know it's even like with um I've I used to play, oh, what was it? Um, like a trivia pursuit thing, you know, like your memory. Mm. You know, it, you could see if, if you could memorize something, you know, or like memory games where you'll you look at something and you think, well, what does this look like? You know, like the identification one, like, was it Clue? Oh. Cluedo, uh, no, not Cluedo, um, Clue, something like, something to do with, you know, you're giving you a clue of the, the person's identity. I used to like that. Yeah, there used to be um, this little thing you could get, the brain training, and they used to have like little games and stuff on there. I had one of those, um, but that was be- way before, like, you know, phones and getting used to all that digital yeah. stuff, and I wasn't really into it. I remember when I was flying, um, we was on standby. We were to, we was all sitting on the table. So you have like your crew that go out, and then you have the standby crew. So if someone calls in sick and they need to get the flight yeah. out, you go. So we was all sitting around this table, and there was an airport standby, and um, we decided to play Jenga. Oh yeah, I like Jenga. So what we decided to use was, you know, the trolleys, the drink trolleys. Well, on the yeah. side there's these metal containers that used to clip on the side of the trolley and Ooh. put all the cups in it so we decided to play Jenga with those and we built it up quite high probably wow. it probably came up to like my shoulders it was quite high up and wow. then obviously you start taking the pieces out and the whole thing came crashing down and they're, they're made of like metal and I remember my manager from that like, there was a filing cabinet in between us and the managers <laughs> and it came crashing down because she didn't know what we were doing. The manager went, "What are you doing around that side?" And we were like, "Nothing." Wow! <laughs> 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 well, oh no! I'm loving this every second, Corinne. This is a, this is funny. We look what professional when we're on the aircraft, but it's only <laughs> in the crew room that we mess about. You got to have a bit of you got to have a bit of fun. Oh my goodness! You do. Do you have something in terms of that makes you smile and scares you? What scares you the most? Is there anything that you have in sort of your thoughts on that? Um, the thing that makes me smile is when I am at events and someone comes up to you and says, oh, my God, you've just helped me make a massive decision in my life or you've just really helped me um 
and I've had people where I've gone to another event and I've seen the, the same person come back and they've had a massive life-changing experience because of something that I've said um, or done. And that really, really makes me smile. And when I think of giving up, when I have those moments where I think, oh my God, this is too hard, I can't do it. I think of those moments and what scares me is the fact that when I think of giving up, if I gave up, I wouldn't be helping those people. And so it it help, it makes me smile and it makes me appreciate what I do, but it also scares me enough not to stop. No, that's fair enough. No, that's a valid point. You know, that's, that's a great answer. The other thing is as well, who are your favourite authors? Is there any particular ones that you like at the moment recently that you if you, that you you like? Um, yes. Yeah, so I like I loved the Green Lights book by Matthew McConaughey. Um, very entertaining, and he's an actor. So when I, I was listening to it on Audible. Um, so he was doing all the voices and all that. So it's very, very entertaining. But Green Lights also has a lot of messages in there as well. Um, lots of realisations. And, you know, again, actors, they don't have it easy when they start and they make decisions that are probably the wrong decisions. They make decisions and, you know, things go wrong. And um, I just found it was really entertaining, but there was a lot of hidden messages in that as well. Um, and the other one, which I can't think of off the top of my head, of the author, that was a really, really good book. Um, it was about manifestation. Okay. And I recommend this to a lot of people, actually. Just can't remember the guy's name. Oh, the Power of Your Subconscious Mind by Joseph Murth Murphy. Oh, wow. So this book was recommended to me uh, by someone I was at an event. And at the time, I was having a lot of problems with one of my other businesses. Um, I was thinking, you know, should I change course? Should I give it up? You know, I have problems with people not paying me. Um, and it was just a burden that I didn't really want to have on my head considering I've got other businesses to focus on and I was struggling financially because of it and um, I was at an event it was at this four-day event and I felt like I was just there hiding from the reality of what was going on in my business and someone recommended this book to me and I listened to it um, and I implemented, you know, what was being said in it. And I listened to certain chapters a few times. Um, and within, within literally days, things started just changing for me. And, and this was last November. And things just started changing. And I could, it's kind of like it opened my mind up so I could see what was really going wrong um because it's easy to go blame everybody else when things are going wrong in your world but I could actually see what I was doing and what I was manifesting um and my moods and how I was looking at situations and things just started changing like I mean dramatically changing um and so I recommend that book to, to anyone it was such but you have to really really read it or listen to it really intently and really follow what he talks about and implement what you know what he does um but yeah it was probably one of the best books that I've ever read wow seems like th there's a number of books that I need to put on my on my reading list now <laughs> <laughs> I'm no, actually listening that. to the chimp paradox at the moment Ooh. um and that's all about, you know, having the monkey brain and then the logical brain. Yes. And how the monkey brain always takes over, yes. um, especially when emotions are involved. Um, so I found finding that's quite interesting. And it's quite true. And I go, yep, that's me. Yep, that's me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm going to be busy, uh, like, you know, diving into these books. Okay. Do you have 
any charity work that uh, and causes that you support? Yes, I used to volunteer for a homeless charity in South End. Um, they we literally like kitted out their kitchen because at the time I moved house and I didn't need my oven, my fridge, um, and we donated lots of stuff like that. And really, really proud of them because what they've done is they had an old building site and they were using the building site when the builders weren't there to do um, a food bank for two nights a week. Um, and then since then, they have done so well. They have got the, the building on the site have let them stay there. They donated the, you know, the wooden, uh, the, the metal containers Oh, yes. Of course, yeah. those up. So they've got one with a donation of clothes. So they've set wow. it up with like a desk. So what they do is they'll, uh, the homeless people will come in, give their clothes and then take what they need, fresh clothes. Of course. Um, and then they'll be washed and recycled, like donated back. As long oh, as they've got holes in them and things, then they're in good nick. Um, the other one is like a canteen. They also have an outside bit. My ex-partner, when we was in construction, they he went down there and volunteered his time and they built um, like a canopy thing with right, yes. walls and that for the summer. But now they've obviously bought it inside because it's cold. Um, so they can have their food and, and everything. Uh, little smoking huts outside. Yes. It's a proper, like, you know, check you in, check you out. There's security on the gates. Wow. Um, any messing about any, you know, drugs or anything like that in there, they let us sit there out. Um, you know, what they do in their own time, but not when they're there, they're, they're there to be, you know, treated well and they expect the staff to or volunteers to be treated well. Um, and they have grown massively. Someone's donated them um, some money and they've just got their own bus as well. Wow. They can, um, they can build a lot of, um you know they can do a lot of charity events there's people that donated uh like psychic readings and stuff like that so they do like charity events to then yes. donate back into the charity um so it's called one love and it's based in south end they've wow. done really really well i've not been up there for some time because obviously we were in lockdown here um but I do actually make reference to it in my book, my times there, because I remember someone donated a Christmas tree and we were putting the Christmas tree up and it started to rain. And it was just at the entrance where they was all coming in to, to get their food and their clothes and showers there as well. And uh, one of the homeless guys came up and he said, can I put this on the tree? And he'd made this little um, Christmas decoration. And what happened? He'd come over to Paris then he'd gone from Paris to somewhere up north and then he came down because, you know, everyone thinks you come down south and you've got more opportunities to work and things like that. Um, so he was just sold a dream that never happened. And uh, he met a lady in Paris, the love of his life, and thought, he, you know, he, he's never going to see her again. And he made a little Christmas tree and he wants to, made a little Christmas decoration and wants to put it on the tree. Wow. And, um, he always comes... He, he actually he lives in the car park just around the corner from this place and he comes back every time it's open to make tea and coffee for the other homeless people oh brilliant even when he broke he fell off a wall and he broke his back so he had this um casting on his back and he was still there serving tea and coffee for the homeless and he's oh. homeless himself oh bless him he's such a lovely guy such a lovely guy um but you know when you really talk to people when you take the time you know some of these homeless people they don't want the help and the 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 um you know money thrown at them and given a house and everything they just want your time they just want to be understood because there's a lot of them that are just really misunderstood and they go into they they finally build this community on the streets so when they're taken away and put into this fancy flat, they don't know how to live because finally they found a community. Finally, they found people that will listen to them and support them and be with them. And now they're on their own again. 
And that's why a lot of them turn to the, the crime and they go, they end up going back on the streets just yes. because they don't have, it's not feeling, feeling their human needs. Um, so I found that, you know, the volunteering was much more beneficial to them yes. than just, you know, giving money and donating. Um, and the other the other charity that I'm looking to donate um, a percentage to within my coaching business is called Promise Dreams. And yes. that's a charity where they will um, take on children who are terminally ill and give them their final wish. Um, and they are sponsored by a property business um, called ARL, who's Sally Lawson runs for them um and they get a lot of help through there obviously a lot of property people they they donate a lot of money and um i actually met the founder she started the she started the charity 20 years ago she then had to kind of move on and you know yeah. with her job and everything and she's now the person who took over from her stepped down She's gone back in now she's kind of got to the retirement age she's gone back in and supporting the charity again um so, yeah and it's really lovely that she was telling us you know they sit in their offices with their donated chairs and tables donated computers they don't spend money on fancy things all the money goes to the children which is very rare with a lot of charities nowadays yes no that's good no that's that's amazing you know i i'm love i'm loving this is i'm hearing all these different things you know it's um it's interesting because you know you get a lot of times when when i have interviews where you hear all this glam stuff what's going on in the foreground but then you don't know what's actually happening in the background and this is what's interesting that i'd like to sort of relate to a lot of people in the audience you know in in reality you know sometimes you don't hear all these things that are going on you know that people sort of participating in and also sort of supporting and it's nice to hear you know that you're you're not just focusing on just your coaching you've also got another part of you that's also supporting other people as well at the same time you know while you're it's coinciding with 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 your coaching you know and you know it's great you know because you, you get that initial kind of um beneficial sort of feeling where you know where there's there's something that's giving back you giving back and being able to get something back without even realizing you know you think it's not giving back as in, in like in an aspect where you know it's a financial thing it's more of the gratitude that people are showing you know in in the, in the cause you know where you you're actually going out there supporting them you're genuinely going out there saying well look this is what I like this is what I'm going to do. And you're, you're not focusing on just you, you know, you're, you're actually giving back something for a change, you know, where you feel that you think, Oh, you know, I want to have something that different kind of feeling because you usually have something where you think, Oh, it's for me, but it's not just you anymore. You know, it's somebody else getting something back, you know, it's, which is even more meaningful to yourself, you know, and it's even, and it's personal as well. You know, you get, something there where you, you can go out and buy something anytime but when you're giving something back to someone and you don't expect anything back yeah it's a good feeling it is it is and just you know especially when you you know with you know the the um working with the homeless and you see the progress they've made you know when they get that job interview when you know someone's donated a suit and they can put that suit on they can go and get their job they can you know and they, they feel supported but a lot of them you know they have their own flat but they would still come back to to the um the food bank because they want to feel part of a community because they're yes. off the streets but they still want to feel that that community spirit and they will come back so it's really and then you hear their story you know and it's lovely um we have a hairdresser that comes down as well and cuts their hair like you know every so often um I think it's like every two weeks um and it's just brilliant and I love that. the lady who's, who organized it all it was just a, a tiny little hut in the car park and now it's a proper full-on permanent structure wow. 
um, and it's open every Tuesday and every Thursday. Wow, no, I, that's that's brilliant. You know, from where something like that happens and then it expands into something bigger, you know, mm. it's it's brilliant because you're giving something back and it's um, adds a lot of great value to people's lives. You know, it's a life changing experience for for many. Yeah. If you could go back in time, what year would it be? Oh, <laughs> interesting one. I'd probably go back to, I don't know, because if I went back in time, it would change what I've done and I don't want to change anything I've done. Yeah, but if there was anything, if there was anything, you know, like, not change anything in that aspect, but just to experience, you know, like a time machine. If you went back in time and it was like, it's like watching, instead of seeing it in a screen, you could just, it was, oh, that's interesting. And you think, oh, I wouldn't want to go around that near there because there's a dinosaur. <laughs> it might want to eat me or something. Or if I, something yeah, like I'd, I'd probably go back to, probably like the 30s or the 40s. Um, yeah. because I just you know I love history yeah. um, and you know like understanding when my when my nan was growing up and yeah. things that she used to talk to me about I don't know if I get that really strong connection because of all the stories she's ever told me I felt like I was physically there but I do have a very strong connection with it. Mm. Um, but I also have my numerology done. Um, yeah. Oh, and I love I was this. Told that I came back um, because normally when you come back from a past life, it's because you've got a lesson to learn that you didn't learn in the previous life. Currently, I didn't have anything to learn. I'd learned everything that I needed to learn. I just came back. I thought, oh, okay, I've come back for another go, have I? <laughs> oh yeah. Um. So yeah. I, so I must have. I don't know where I've come back from, but I do feel like, yeah, there 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 was probably been somewhere that I should probably go back to and revisit. Um. But not go back in my lifetime because I've, I appreciate all the bad things and all the good things. Um. Because I don't know content to put in my book if I didn't have any drama in my life. Yeah. Sounds like a quantum leap thing, like a Sam Beckett thing, you know, where you'd, you'd appear from somewhere, but instead of just appearing there, you could have full control of it, you know, where you go without having to worry about all the changes, you know, you don't want any changes, you know, there, what's going there, it's more of what you see, you know, what happened there and then, and then you don't have to sort of say, oh, okay, I want to change that, because obviously things are meant to happen for certain purposes you know historical wise but otherwise you wouldn't be reading them in the books or hear about them you know in present tense but I suppose there's some things that you can prevent as well but then again you know that's the way life is some things you you can kind of see things it'd be nice to see something visual you know something in your face you know like you think oh that's a bit odd I wouldn't have expected that you know to happen you know where I've, I like historical stuff as well, and it would be quite funny to sort of step out somewhere and go, oh, wow. Is that like what it looked like? You know, we're like, we're like building, building like, um, you know, like wooden hut things with, with sticks and mud and that, you know, like j j during yeah. the time, the medieval times and where like a Robin Hood thing, you know, where everyone was out there and like on horseback. Yeah. <laughs> Things like that when they had no cars and motors, everything was all like you either walked or you um you had a horse. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh god. Actually mentioning that, that was one of my next questions. Actually about transportation. Oh, this is this is gonna be a fun one. Would you rather ride a bike, ride a horse, or drive a car? <laughs> <laughs> I'd probably say drive a car. Yeah. Um, because normally when I go out on a bike ride, I live in a beautiful town. Um, 
And I do like going for a bike ride, but the last time I went on a bike ride, I went via the pub and I had right. to push the, push the bike back down the hill because I wasn't, <laughs> probably wasn't legally safe to drive it. <laughs> oh, I'm like... I'm liking these conversations. You see, like, it's not a normal, everyday kind of conversation that you have on an interview, Karina. But <laughs> it's like it's funny, funny hearing this because you're probably thinking, "Oh God, I probably don't ask, get asked all these type of questions on these other formal interviews." Like, I get Phil, go, come onto the Phil Crew show, and you get all these funny questions that he comes out with. <laughs> this is like, funny, but I'm this is like, yeah, spilling the beans on everything. Um, <laughs> I've never actually ridden a horse. I'd love to ride a horse. And I'd love to ride a horse on a beach. Oh, yeah. I would yeah. absolutely love that. Um, but I've never ridden a horse. Oh, there's some funny experiences with horses. I was like, oh. You know when they say, oh, like, um, I do want to do, what was it, mucking in or something, or muck it, you know, you have to clear out clear out all the, the, the horse stables. Yeah. and the stables and stuff like that and you get all these silly experiences that you hear about you think well it's your own fault you shouldn't have stood behind the horse because that's the reason why you don't stand behind one yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, dear, I've had some funny funny conversations like that my my dad my dad used to say it to me when when I was younger and you know when you had the old stereotypical black and white films where you got the um the westerns mm. and when, when they go in there like they the saloons where they have like the gunslingers and stuff like that and he said to me I'll never forget this and I was so obviously naive and gullible that back then he said to me oh you see all that muck there he says I feel sorry for those 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 cowboys because they've got a real hell of a mess around the back of the telly there you're gonna have to clear it up now have a look I don't, I'd be look, trying to look round the telly to find out where the horse muck was. <laughs> my mum and my, my whole entire family were all like with tears of laughter. You should have been streaming down their eyes. And I'm, there's me all confused. Like, Dad, what are you on about? Where's, where's the horse muck gone? That's magic. That's brilliant. And my dad was roaring. Oh, no. Where he almost fell off his chair in the kitchen laughing he's like son he said, oh. he said oh bless you I love you son he says you make me laugh he said to be honest with you that's the magic magic of television I said look he's probably picked it up right there look it's nothing around the back so I was, there's me trying to figure out where all the horse muck had gone because like you see one part of the horse where all has come out in the back and there's me wandering around the telly <laughs> trying to find out where it's all gone <laughs> oh right there Funny things are what you believe when you're a child and when you're that naive, isn't it? Oh, bless you. No. Oh, dear. Okay, the other thing is, it's like, if you were stranded on a desert, uh, deserted island, what three things would you bring with you? Ooh. Definitely not my phone, because I get some peace and quiet. Mm. <laughs> nothing electronic yeah oh i don't know i probably knowing my brain of you know being safe and being sensible i'd probably say a sharp knife yep or you know food and survival um Probably something warm, like warm jacket, blanket, yes. or something like that. Mm. Yeah. Um, and insect repellent. Yeah. Definitely insect repellent. I get <laughs> bitten so much when I'm away. And oh. I'm allergic to some of the, whatever they are, mosquitoes or whatever. Yes. Like yeah, of course, yeah. All oh, the insects, yeah. That, yeah. It comes up like I had, I got bitten on like the inside of my arm and it came up, it was like this big. Um, wow. Oh, it was horrible. It was so itchy. No, so, bless yeah, you. Definitely insect repellent. <laughs> no, good on you. I'd good probably have three of those, just, just that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God, I love this. 
what advice would you give your younger self? Set boundaries. Don't be... And don't try and please everyone. Good advice. Because I think we go through life trying to please people. True. And trying to make other people happy. And then in turn, we forget what we really want. Yeah. And what makes us happy and why we're doing what we're doing. That's a valid point. That's a, that's good advice. Because, you know, I think we forget ourselves because, you know, we're so good. When you start becoming really giving, it's good to serve other people to give. Mm. But you should also be able to feel that. I think it sounds like it's been selfish, but mm. I don't think it is. I think it's good to have that kind of self-respect and value for yourself too as well as being able to give yeah yeah definitely the other thing is as well is oh good question what is your favorite zoo animal <laughs> Yeah? Yeah. I've always wanted to go like on a safari or something because they, they won't do over here because of health and safety. But in some countries, they'll let you hold a baby tiger. And I've oh. always, my nan got to do it oh. um, years ago and she held a baby tiger. I'm surprised she didn't put it in a handbag or bring it home because she loved tigers as well. <laughs> um, but yeah, I'd love to do that. Yeah, hold a baby tiger. Oh, wow. Like that that's my big thing. That's what I want to work towards for my own personal goal. Yeah. Is to be able to go abroad and work in animal sanctuaries and mm. look after the, the babies and feed them and look after the sick ones and you know, release them back into the wild and all that yeah. kind of thing. And just, oh. and just you know, be financially free that I I can just volunteer. Yeah, no, that's good. I, I that's a good three idea. And, and do that and volunteer and, yeah, I'd love to do that. Probably very, well, it, it gives you a sense of purpose additional to what how you would feel when you're serving others, isn't it? You know, in the same time, that, you know, rather just the coaching, there's also something else that you can con you feel that you're contributing towards yeah you know, it's very fulfilling as well when it's I think it feels really refreshing because you know that you're, you're you're adding value to animals as well because obviously as a human being you know other we we have all this kind of world that we live in at the moment where it's all about human beings but then what about those that can't speak for themselves that can't um they can't communicate with you and say, well, look, I need help. You know, animals can't do that, you know, and if you, you tend to feel that sometimes even witnessing things, like you said, you know, about the cats and other animals and that, you know, it's, it's very fulfilling, you know, having the, that, you know, you, you feel like something's missing, you know, like when you mentioned about the cats, you know, like if you, if you witness something or you see something and you, you sometimes, you, I, I don't know if you felt the same way, but when you feel that you can do something, mm. you're able to sort of do that and, and you feel good about it at the same time. But where, whereas if, you know, you witness something and you think, mm, I can do that, and then you don't, it's kind of like, it's just only like a thought process in your mind, isn't it? Whereas you're actually doing something, feels pretty good. Yeah, you know, having that energy that you're actually giving something back as well, not just as a human being, but also a, a, an animal, you know, like you, like your cats, for example, you know, they probably appreciate it. And I thought, oh, thanks. You've homed me rather than sort of, oh, yeah, thanks. Just leave me out there in the road. And, and that's it. You know, they've had you... a very good life. They have had a very good life because my friends in my old house, they they branded my house as Disneyland for cats. Because I used to have the next door neighbour's cats used to climb in the window to play yep. with my cat's boys because they were just everywhere. It was just like a cat's house. There was just cats wow. everywhere. And when I moved out of the house, the next door neighbour said that there was this little white kitten that used to come in the window, play in the house. There was, there was no toys there and then go and sleep on his bed. 
So, but I don't know where he got that from. I went, mm, probably from when I lived there and I encouraged them to come in. And <laughs> <laughs> oh, Karina. <laughs> oh, dear. That's funny. The other thing is, as well, uh, lastly, if you had a choice uh, to have anybody and then anyone historical, just the last sort of question to wrap things up. Is there anyone that comes to mind? Actually, I'm giving you two choices because it's good to have more than one. I'm spoiling you here a little bit rather than just one choice. Two. Now, I know on previous parts of the show of other guests, I've had one, but I'm starting to become a bit more generous and being able to give them two two choices because I think sometimes you think well hang on a minute actually there might be one that they like but then there might be another person that they they thought they had in mind wasn't sure because they thought well actually you know one might override one over the other but I thought well look being as it's you know at the time of where you feel rather than having feeling great deal of importance, they might have added value that has affected their life, you know, where you think, well, there's one person that might be historical, which would be great, you know, if you could be able to speak to them. It could be either alive or historical, you know, past tense has passed away. Or it could be someone that you know that you'd like to get information from or would like to know knowledge of something and uh, have a meal with them. And where would you go? got two choices okay so um correctly oh there's so many people There's so many people, I can't even think of anyone in particular. Because um, like you said, you learn from so many. You do. And research people and, you know, I want to get into their minds. But I think anyone, anyone in like the NLP world. Right. Um, like Richard Bandler and John right. Green. Well, obviously, they're not that historic. They're still around, but being you know really getting into their minds and yeah. see tad james is not around anymore mm. um i'm really getting into their mind and understanding where it all came from and what they're you know what inspired them to get into it um obviously that's where Tony robbins got all his information and inspiration from um, so I'd love to meet them. Um, and now, I don't know, I suppose, well, the only person really, well, I mean, my mentor, Jess and James, he will obviously learn, uh, learn from Andy. Um, and I'm lucky enough to have him as a friend, as a mentor, and you know he teaches in such a way where he just makes it really easy um to understand and again nlp trains so it, for me it, it works easier because it's not just telling you what you should do and why you should do it you really understand the real true meaning of how that um impacts your audience how they feel um because people remember they don't remember what you said they remember how you made them feel um so yeah I think it would be would probably be them people oh brilliant because I, I could sit and talk to, to people like that that you know anything to do with psychology NLP anything like that it was, it's just fascinating really really where, fascinating. Would, you, where would you take them and uh, what would you eat and what would you talk about oh 
I don't know, probably go out for a nice steak or something like that. Oh, nice. <laughs> yeah, and just, I mean, I probably wouldn't do much talking. I would just listen to them and just yeah. absorb all their knowledge and information. Um, yeah, and just take my notepad with me. <laughs> no, good on you. You know, uh, seriously, uh, hand on heart, Karina, it's been a great pleasure interviewing you once again. Uh, just to let you know, folks, uh, we will get an update. Need for more information about Karina's book and uh, also other bits of part of the show. You want some information then I'm going to get some information from Karina. I'll, I'll connect it to the link down below. Don't forget to subscribe. I hope you enjoyed uh, today's show. It's been a pleasure once again, because this is unedited, uncut version, uh, director's cut. <laughs> and it's been a pleasure having you on the Phil Crew Show, Karina, once again, uh, from Wings of Success. Yeah, don't forget, there will be a book coming out. Um, it will be, well, you said you said about December, there'll be, what was that, was that for... for um, for those, for those who are really interested in, was it before the actual sort of launch on the... Yes, so the book will be out, um, we're hoping for the end of January. Okay. Um, but we are opening a priority list on priority the 4th list, right. of December. Um, I have a link already, so I can send that to you to, to put in the comments. Yes, um, but the special thing for me is that it would have been my nan's birthday on the 4th oh. of December. Wow. She passed away two years ago in April, and oh, um, it was just a really big thing that I wanted to do for her, uh, for my granddad as well. But we was working out dates, and it worked out really well because I'm actually speaking at an event that weekend, um, and I'm up for um, two more awards as well. Oh, I look forward to that, Karina. Uh, see you go. For me, the book and doing it on a special day um, is my absolute, I couldn't imagine anything more perfect. Yes. Um, the award would just be a bonus. Oh, fantastic. Uh, it, really, it really is an honour, Karina. You know, I look forward to having some more updates with, with more of your progress of work and your, wow, your, your other services that you've got. You know, I, I look forward to hearing more of that and more stories and be able to work along with you, uh, alongside you yourself in the foreseeable future. All right, folks, it's time to wrap this up and uh, say our goodbyes. Yeah, thank you very much, Karina. And it's been an honour having you on the Phil Crew Show again. Thank you very much. Oh, it's been an emotional and funny, uh, should I say, episode uh, today because, uh, Karina, you guys, you're in for a treat. You know, this is the unedited version, but I'm sure you will also see the edited version. So you'll be able to see that when you actually subscribe and um, part of the uh, new plan of membership. There'll be a link along here underneath this, this video. And uh, we'll look forward to having you guys tune in again and watching the Phil Crew Show. And I'm sure just to sort of off the record, I've got a good feeling that Karina is going to be in, in a number of them as well, but I'm not going to say any more other than that. All right, folks. Thanks very much, Karina. Thank Take you. care. Bye yeah. for now. <laughs> Bye.